안녕하세요. 한국어 패치의 이안이랑 난주입니다. So as you can see today, our two happy smiling faces outside without masks. That's because the mask rules are finally changing in Korea with regards to like being out in public. So uh, you'll see us with them on and off at various times throughout this uh, throughout this vlog. But right now, we're good. So we're going to go today to a very special place. I, it's not in Hyundai. It's in Kijang. Uh, so it's right next to where we live uh, in Hyundai. It's the next like borough over. Um, but we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go see something really special in a special area and uh, get a little history today too. 네. 좋을까? 좋아요. 갈까? 가자! We're here. We made it. Uh, we're at the place we wanted to show you today, uh, and we're standing right here in front of the, I guess, body door. Maybe we could call <laughs> the uh, the entrance stone to where we wanted to go today. So let's uh, let's take a look at it here. So it says, "He Tong Yong Gung Sa." So we have He Tong Yong Gung Sa. This is, as you can see from the sa here at the bottom, a temple. This is a Buddhist temple, a char. So, if we look all the way at the top here, we have Hedong, which is an old, old, old name for Korea. This was one of the names of like one of the countries that existed in Korea. Yong, this character is a dragon. Gung is a castle, and sa is a temple. So this is like the Korean dragon temple. <laughs> I guess is one way to look at it. So uh, as we walk toward the temple, we're gonna walk through this little shijang here, um, and what? Masketa. Oh, manju masketa. 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 Anyway, as we walk to the temple, um, I'll just give you kind of a a little background on this temple. So a lot of foreigners that live in Busan, uh, because this is a super popular tourist spot, even for Koreans who come visit here. A lot of foreigners who live in Busan or in Korea or whatever, they uh, they call this the water temple. And I have literally no idea why they call it the water temple. But I, maybe they played too much like Zelda when they were kids or something on the Nintendo 64. But this is called the water temple for a lot of foreigners. However, uh, this is actually a Buddhist temple. It's not like any kind of animist religion or anything like that or anything to deal with elemental stuff. It is just a, uh, a Buddhist temple. There's a little bit of controversy about the history of this Buddhist temple as well. What you're going to see here today was actually built in the 1970s um, on an empty piece of land. Now, the story that's uh, shared by the people who built the temple is that this is a like a rebuild of uh, a temple that was built at the end of Goryeo in like the 1300s, the 14th century. Look at these. These are for good luck. Yomju raneun goji. Yeah. Here's here's the Dharma. Daruma, right? Yeah, I have one of these in my car. Yeah. Sago <laughs> yeah. When we bought when we bought uh the car we have, Nanju's mom gave me one of these to, to put yeah. for, in the car for good luck. And I've had no accidents, so scientifically scientifically they work. Um just saying. Anyway, so the <laughs> the people who built this temple claim that it was built uh Originally built in the 1300s, destroyed in a war with Japan, and then uh, rebuilt again, and burned down and rebuilt again. So the, <laughs> there's a lot of stories behind it, but very little, little evidence to prove that any of that actually happened. Nevertheless, look at these guys. Nevertheless, uh, it is a very pretty temple. Uh, it's a really beautiful spot, a really amazing location, and uh, we're going to show it to you. Okay, so as we head into this first uh, spot here, uh, we're going to see a bunch of statues. And as we look at the statues, you may be able to figure out pretty quickly that these are all of the different zodiac symbols. So here we have the GT, right? 
GT, the mouse or rat or whatever you want to call it. And over here, the Soti. Someone taking a picture. And Pomti, the tiger. The rabbit. Tokiti. Yungti, the dragon. Pemti, the snake. Malti, the horse. Yangti, the uh, goat, sheep, ram, lamb combo. Tanabiti. Wansungi. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, uh, the monkey. Takti. And us, the Keti. <laughs> Nanju and I are both Keti. We are the dog. And I like dogs, so that works out great. Finally, the last one here, Tejiti on the list. Pretty nice, right? The reason that we have uh, these uh, lanterns everywhere, too, is because next week is Puchoni Moshin Nai, which is Buddha's birthday, the first Buddha's birthday, right? Yeah. Um, and so all over Korea, you'll see these cute lanterns hung up on the streets leading to temples to, I guess, a long time ago, this, if this was an old tradition, I'm not actually sure. But this would be like the way to, to know how to get to the temple. You follow the lanterns. As you can see here, it says, this one's easier to read. Puchonim Oshin Nai. Let's go over here. So if we look over here, we have the story as well. We'll, uh, we'll take a look at that. So this board here, uh, has in several different languages. Over there is Japanese and uh, Chinese, I think, or just Japanese. Chinese is over here. Um, on here we have Korean and English, but what I thought was really cool was there is some mixed script on here without any help. So if we take a look down here at the bottom, it says, 받아도 좋다 하고 청산도 좋다 건을 받아와 청산이 한 곳에 외단 말가 하물며 청풍 명월이 있으니 여기 곧 성경 극락 정토 인가 하노라. But there's some uh, hanja there that they felt Korean people would be comfortable enough reading that they did not switch them to hunger, and that is really cool. Anyway, the, the gist of the story is that essentially um, a Buddhist monk was traveling all around Korea looking for the most auspicious, the most holy place. Um, and he found this place to be the most holy because like a river from Baekdusan came all the way down here and uh, erupted into a mountain or whatever where, where, the, uh, where the gods came down and, and strolled about. The reality is uh, of this land, of this spot where they built the temple, is that the feng shui, or in Korean, the pung su, is really good because there's a mountain at the back and water at the front. And if you know anything about how feng shui works, or pung su, as we say in Korean, feng shui in English, it's important that there's a clear path for dragons or gods or whatever the local culture believes to be important to come down from the mountain and be able to reach the sea unobstructed. So that's why you have a lot of like holes in buildings in, in China or in Hong Kong and in Korea as well, they want to have a, a safe path for gods and dragons to come down from the mountain and enter the sea. Um, and so that's water in the front, mountain in the back is the general uh, feng shui, pung su rule for uh, setting up a building. And so this place is, as you will see when we go inside, very good pung su. Bada. <laughs> right. Should we head in? Yeah. I wanted to stop for a second um, and talk about this guy right here. If you've seen this face before, uh, this is the Dharma, or in Korean it's Taima. Taima. Uh, you may have seen this guy's face more iconically on uh, Japanese stuff, those little heads that you see everywhere. They're like red and they've got this guy's face on them. They're called Taruma in Japanese. I don't, I'm not sure what the pitch accent is, but Taruma. And, uh, this is a really important uh, symbol all across East Asia in countries that have any interaction with Buddhism. And here it is in Korea as well. One last thing that I wanted to point out. I'm not sure why this little homie is here. 
but this is a Torarobang, <laughs> a stone grandpa from Jeju, made of the wrong stone. These are usually made of volcanic rock, but this one's made of, uh, I don't know, concrete or something. But uh, I love these. These are real traditional Korean, uh, well, Korean or at least Jejuin um, sculptures. Really cool. Something really cool that you'll see all over this temple as well uh, are these special shrines for very specific purposes. Um, for example, inside there's one that we'll see where it's like um, fertility, like we'll have a good baby, something like that, and you're supposed to rub the belly. Um, there's other ones about like getting good grades on an upcoming test or something. And then here, possibly the most traditional of all Buddhist yeah. temple things ever <laughs> is the traffic safety prayer pagoda with a traditional Korean tire. Kyotong Anjan Kiwon Tap. So, yeah, like uh, Kiwon here is, is prayer or like a wish or a, a hope, some sort of like magical desire sort of thing. But what they've put here for this traffic safety is this really beautiful top. These are all called top. These uh, big pagodas, these tall towers that are covered in uh, sculptured imagery. I don't know if we can see it without zooming. Maybe you can see it there. But all the way up to the top are these sculptures. And it's really beautiful. There are famous top all over Korea. Dabo top is one of the more famous ones. But uh, pretty special. So what you'll see whenever you go into a Korean temple at the gate or over the over the uh, the door to different places are the hanta here written on a board. And if we look at this one here, the hanta are sa gung yong tong he. But that doesn't sound right, does it? That's because in classical Chinese, people wrote from right to left. So we start when we have he dong yong gung sa, it's going to be he dong yong gung sa from right to left. Pretty interesting, right? <laughs> anyway, you can also see this amazing Dan Chung here on the gate, this Korean style temple art. It is fantastic. I love the colors. Okay, let's head in. You ready? As you can see, you gotta rub the belly to uh, to get the sun. I think this is the rule. <laughs> look how look how smooth it is. <laughs> People want a sun. As we come down the end of this very long staircase, we're going to see the main area of the temple and the, uh, the view a lot of people come here for. Right here. <laughs> because we are right on the water, you can see how great of a place to build a temple this is. <laughs> right here on the water. Over here is the temple. And right here is the ocean. Fantastic. Smells good too. <laughs> this seems to be the main way that the temple gets its funding to pay for, uh, to pay for things is uh, this game that they've set up here. It's not actually a game, but <laughs> it's a fountain where you can, throw, uh, you can throw your coins. Ooh. Almost got one. I don't have any coins, I'm sorry. Hey, okay, let's go. Very close. <laughs> One of the really special things about uh, this holiday, Puchoni Mojinar, Buddha's birthday, is that they cover the temple in these colored lanterns, like all the temples. And if you can see, there are these papers hanging from the lanterns too. 
And these papers are wishes and hopes and uh, things for, you know, like good luck and things like that. Uh, I don't want to I don't want to get too close to any of them because those are probably personal for people. I don't want to like put anyone on blast here. But uh, what's really cool is, uh, you know, Nanju's family is Buddhist as well. At least her mother is. And she does these too. And I think it's really uh, cool and special. It makes a lot of people very happy to do this kind of stuff. So. And I think probably my mom write your name too. Hey, okay, I got all the luck this year. So if we take a look at this sign here, it says Kwanbu Uishik. So, 아기 부처님을 깨끗이 씻겨 드림과 동시에 나 자신의 마음 속에 탐, 진, 치 번뇌를 씻어내고 맑고 청정의 지혜와 복을 성취하기 위한 의식입니다. 세 번만 하세요. So, if we take a look at this, it says like if you wash the baby Buddha, uh, you're also washing yourself at the same time and and your your heart or your soul, and you're washing away your 탐. Jin and Chi. Tam being like uh, your like desires or envy or things like that. Jin being hatred or anger. Um, and Chi is Odisabam, so like uh, ignorance or foolishness, things like that. Kind of washing away all of the temptations and negativity that you have. Um, and we're only supposed to wash them three times, so we'll be careful to, to do it that way. <laughs> Okay, so it's Nanji's turn now. Inza. Hana. Two. Set. Inza. <laughs> so as we head up these very steep stairs I thought I'd take a moment to uh, share with you something. What's going on? He does. He's happy. <laughs> Zoom in. Ta -da! Happy boy. So the reason we brought you here to a temple in Korea, I mean, there's temples all over Korea. It's not like particularly that special, although this one's really pretty, is A, because this is a special spot in Busan that's really popular for tourists and as you can see, actual Busan people. <laughs> yes. But also because Buddhism, I think, is a little bit more integral to the culture in the southern part of South Korea. There are more Buddhists in the, at the further south you go, a higher percentage of the population. So you'll see a lot of people that actually go to temples regularly, not just temples that are um, maintained as like tourist spots or anything like that. As yeah. you can see, I don't want to like, you know, show anybody's personal business, but there are a lot of people here that are here to pray and here to do like religious rituals um, as opposed to just people who are walking through taking pictures. So um, this is pretty special, a pretty special part of Busan and Gyeongsangdo in general. Yes. And so that's why we thought coming out to uh, show off this particular temple would be a, a good use of time. Also, it's just like wildly pretty. <laughs> for all the beautiful things this temple has, though, I do got to put them on blast here for a second. Never don't lean. Because <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's okay. I'll forgive you. So as we watch Nanju do a prayer here, she just put her money in the box, the donation box, and did her prayer. What the hell? What was it? The three things. Tam, Jin, Chi is gone. <laughs> the list. 
그래서 우리는 해동용 공사에 여기저기를 다 가봤어. 진짜 예쁜 절이다, 맞지? 음, 진짜. 응. 너무 예쁘다. 우리 엄마도 이번 부처님 오신 날에는 여기도 한번 와봤으면 좋겠어. 왜냐하면 우리 엄마가 부처님 오신 날에 절을 여덟 군데나 가거든. 왜냐하면 팔이 엄청 중요한 숫자잖아, 맞지? 좀 운이 있는 약간 auspicious 음, 음. 어. 숫자라서. 이번에는 꼭그한 군데 여기도 왔으면 좋겠네. 진짜 너무 예뻐서. 그리고 근데 힘들어, 맞지? 음. 약간 여덟 개 다른 절 가는 게 좀. 진짜 힘들어. 왜냐하면 내 생각에 그냥 이거 그냥 내 생각인데 음. 절은 항상 가기 어려운 곳에 세워져 있어. 음, 맞지? 맞아, 지어져 또, 있어. 음. 왜냐 그거 주로 산 위에 아니면 뭐 주로 산 위에 있다 이거. 음. 근데 거기 가려면 이렇게 등산하고 갈수 있어. 절에 오는 과정이 그 탐진치를 이기기 위한 번뇌의 과정이 될 수도 있겠다. 왜냐면 어렵, <웃음> 어렵게 오니까. 맞지? 맞지? 그러면 우리는 저기 다른 데 가가지고 음. 해동용궁사가 진짜 예쁘게 보이는 곳이 있거든? 나가는 음. 길에? 거기서 한번 보여주고 그 들어올 때 있었던 시장에서 음. 맛있는 걸 한번 사 먹을까? 너무 사 먹을 수밖에 없다. 어. 어. 먹고 가야지. 좋아. <웃음> 간다. 그래. So, we brought you over here because this is the best view of the temple. So we were just over there, uh, and uh, that's where we were walking around. You can see the lanterns and stuff like that. But uh, as you can see, mountain, temple, water, right here. Absolutely banger, Pungsu. And Nanju. <laughs> so anyway, this is a really special place in Busan, even though the uh, history may be a little unclear or uh, debated. But uh, we wanted to bring you here just to show you how cool it was. So hopefully you enjoyed this little uh, little trip with us. We're going to go get a snack. We'll film that for you. But uh, I think that's it for today. Anything you want to say? I want to say something. It's delicious. We'll eat it. Oh, it's delicious. I know. Let's eat it.